Yeah. Erev Tov, everyone. I want to apologize. We're starting today late. We were just uh, arrived from a Baruch Hashem beautiful uh, wedding. Uh, so our class today is going to be short, brief, and to the point. We're going to discuss a little bit about Berkat HaGomel. What is a Gomel? Why need to say, someone need to say a special blessing after being saved from certain situation in life? We see what kind of situation and what this Berakha is all about and when you can say it. And the other part of the show is going to be also short, the gate of Simcha, the gate of joy is going to be on the same video. So later on we're going to adjust and add more wording into it. Baruch atu Adonai, Ruhinu Malachu Alom Shakul in Hiyo B'Divoro. Okay. Our sages, Chazal, institute Birkat HaGomel, the blessing of HaGomel. It's called HaGomel. What does that mean? To be recited by one or who was saved from any of the following four hazards. Okay, wow. You were saved from a hazard, so you have to say Baracha? Yes, it's a thanksgiving, saying thank you to God. So let's say you were at the highway, and one was at the highway, and he go through, he went through a car accident, and his car flipped over other cars, and he was you know, was thrown from the car and he was all broken and he got out of the car. He went to the hospital, was hospitalized for a few months and then got back. Does you need to say uh, a gomel? Question number two. The same car flipped. Someone in the car that was with him just got out completely uninjured. Not even a scratch. He was in a big danger. Does he need to say Hagomel? Okay, today you'll be surprised. These are one of these are the four things. One, um, first one, one who and um, what is this? Undertake. Yeah, undertake the sea voyage, voyage like in France, a voyage, and arrives at his destination. Why? Because just going through the sea, it's a place of danger. Uh, who knows what's going to be there? You know, pirate, monsters, Jesse. <clears throat> There's monsters in the seas? Yes. Uh, you know, big ships can, uh, can uh, sink. Titanic, for example. Right. Uh, okay. There's dangerous all over all the time. You got off of you got off the sea. Even if you were sailing for fun, you had a cruise. You had a cruise. Why? We had a good time. We had a, um, we had fun. We had entertainment. We had good food. Yet, nonetheless, you spent time in a floating hotel. Still, you must say thanks to Hashem because you probably were not even aware to the big danger you were at. Number two, Jesse. One who crosses the desert and arrives at his destination. The desert. And it doesn't matter how you cross the desert. If he was with a car, a bicycle, a bike, a camel, uh, walking, just being in such place is good enough to say, Hashem Tadarabah, thank you for saving me from this place. The other one, one who was sick and recuperated from illness. So he has to be bedridden. Could be a flu, could be a sore throat, could be a fever, could be the car, the guy that uh, was thrown from the car, you remember? Because he was bedridden. And the fourth one, one who was uh, incarcerated in prison and released. Okay? So you came out of the prison. It's a horrible place to be. People get killed there. It's a filthy place. Nobody wants to be there, right? So thank God, thank you, Hashem, for sending me from this place. So you see, the one that was saved in the car accident without a scratch, not supposed to say, and he will not say, Hagomel. It's only under these four conditions. Again, sea, desert illness, bedridden, or prison. 
So you were saying... Hmm? Traveled by air. Traveled by air also. But why not? Why you traveled by air? Because on the air you cross around um, desert and sea and oceans and all that. Mm, uh, let me add that someone that is driving today 45 minutes each distance uh, it's going to be around 90 minutes some say even less 72 minutes it's enough to it's, it's 36, 36 it's enough to say Hagomel so people that works at uh, I don't know a little bit far away from the airport they'll have to say Hagomel every day and how soon you have to say it so basically yes why Hamovadia Paskin that all the roads today under the category of danger. There's crazy people driving there, and there is heavy traffic, and there's accident on a daily basis. Just coming back home safe, um, it's enough to say, Hashem Todah Raba, a special blessing, Berkat HaGomel. You're supposed to say this blessing within three days. Now, if someone has to do it every day because he's driving to work every day and the driving is 40 minutes or, or so each side, so the halacha says, it's better to say every three days. If you can't, at least say it's every Shabbat, every week. Okay? Why are we saying it every Shabbat? You see everybody doing it when they have Sefer Torah. When they have Sefer Torah, you, you, they're saying a gomel. Why? Basically because in order to have Torah out, you have to have at least 10 people. And Hagomel must be said in the front of 10 people. Other than that, you can say Hagomel without having Sefer Torah around you. This is, for example, a woman that just gave birth. She has, she go home and she's saying Hagomel in front of a group of 10 people. Okay? So in Sephardim, they usually do it and Brit Yitzchak, it's a night before the Brit, Brit Milah, it's a Brit Yitzchak, you read, and there is a small meal, and she comes out of the room, and she said, Agomel, Ashkenazim do, Shalom Zohar, this could be the Shabbat, Shabbat before the Brit Milah, it could be five days before, it could be two days, it could be one day, it could be uh, seven days, it doesn't matter, before, okay? In your case, by the way, if she, she gave birth on Sunday, it's, it's, it's considered one day already. Mm -hmm. So even a few hours, in one hour, it's one day. No. So it definitely could be from Sunday and up. Okay. So if you want to do Sunday, fine. You don't want Sunday, it's up to you. Okay. What's the blessing? And maybe we conclude with that. The blessing is as follows. Hagomel lechayavim tovot. Shegemalani kol tuv. Those who hear the reaction of the blessing should answer Amen. I'm sorry, the recitation of the blessing should answer Amen. And at the phrase, Akel, Ayel Kodesh Bochu, Shegemalcha Kol Tov, Hu Igmalcha Kol Tov Sela, the one who is blessed uh, responds Amen. Ken Yehi Ratzon. Okay? Ideally, Berkat Gomel should be recited in the presence of at least ten men, of whom two are scholars. And the one reciting the blessing may be counted among the ten. If no scholars are present, one should not refrain from reciting the blessing. Yet, it may not be recited without the presence of a quorum. It is customary to recite the Kadagomel at a time of reading of the Torah, as that is always done in the presence of. Uh, okay, we already said that. I think we can we can finish here. Any questions you have, uh, we can more can go more deeply to it um, later on. Let's read the last halacha here in this uh, paragraph. One who is obligated to recite the Kadagomel for two reasons traveled across the desert and uh, recuperated from illness simultaneously. Simultaneously. Oh, maybe both. Okay. Or did not recite the Kadagomel immediately and was obligated to recite it again 
for the different purpose should recite the blessing once with the intention of including both. Okay, so here we have a case that someone, he was traveling and he was also, I don't know, he was sick. So he said, I need to say Agomel twice. Okay, let's say he was sick, he was traveling and he got out of prison. If you have to say three times, no. You say one time, having in mind to cover for the other three um, times you were supposed, or two times, the other extra two times, you're supposed to be, to say Agumel, you were under this category of saying Agumel. Any questions? This is a special baracha that each Jew should say. Um, let me conclude with saying that it's customary in many communities, especially in the Sephardi community, that the woman, if she comes to the Bet Knesset, she can stand as Rat Nashim, the woman's section. Her husband can say Hagomel only and cover for her only if he's supposed to say it himself. So let's say he was traveling and on Shabbat he can say, okay, just listen to what I'm saying and I'm covering with this Baracha for you too, like he do for Kiddush. So she doesn't have really to say it. In case he didn't travel, she has to say it herself. Okay? It's a mitzvah for her to say. It's clearly for the halacha, Yilkut Yosef, that to come, the woman should come to the Bet Knesset and say this Baracha. Nonetheless, it's not so uh, common uh, to see in many synagogues, but they should come and say Agumel to say to say to Hashem, Toda Rabbah. Thank you for saving me. I'm going to stop here. And you're going to come back with Orchot <coughs> Sadikim. You have a question? You have a question, Jesse? Yes. But you don't have to hold the phone because she can open for Facebook and see me. Yeah. Jesse? Huh? She's laughing uh, no, at you? No, no, no. She, she, don't, she don't have Facebook. Okay, so my question is, uh, I, I don't know if it's connected. Can I have one of the books that I, don't, I didn't bring with me? I don't know if it's connected no. to it, but I, I know you're supposed to say uh, the, tra the traveler's prayer, no? Before. Okay. So, uh, the, but how, how, does, how, does, how does that work? No. Is, is you just say before you travel or when you get to no. the destination? No, no. When you getting out of the city, let's say you're traveling to Fort Worth, mm -hmm. and after Fort Worth, I don't know, to whatever, any destination, to Weco. So as soon as you leave Dallas, even if you're still on the highway, you say it. You don't have to stop your you know car. It is? It's in Italy. It's in that place where they have that centipede, and they have that, that old country store that's a gas station, and it has an old country store. That's exactly 72 minutes. We don't go to that stop there many times, and we just say it there. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 I get it. Okay, everybody. So as soon as you travel 72 minutes, you stop wherever you are and you... You don't have to stop, you can say while you're driving. Oh, okay, we continue with the gate of Simcha. We want to take advantage today and say Mazal Tov to the Moranos family for the birth of the baby boy. Mazal Tov. Say Mazal Tov. Mazal Tov. We are very excited and thrilled. Um... The one of family is going to have a baby boy that becomes a scholar, a great rabbi, wherever he's at, and represent the family and the community with much respect and, and, and bring blessing to Klalam Israel. Okay. Um, we're on page 210. 211. 211. Oh, 210. Okay. Okay. So we've learned last time that. The Shekhinah, lights from God, comes and rests upon one only in the midst of joy, which means without joy, God is not with you. This is the first rule. To have God within you, with you, you have to be in the, with the joy. Regardless of whatever go you go through, God forbid. I want to dedicate also this Torah class, Rabbi Arya, you know his mother? I can dedicate this to our class to Refua Shelema Rabbi Foratoa by Arya Fangenbaum. Speedy recovery, soon we'll hear by Zalashem. Good news, good, good, and great news on his behalf. Okay, Tiferet Aneshama, so you're going to let by Zalashem Yafa reading it. 
Where? Oh, at the bottom? Okay. Okay. There is another benefit. Go ahead. There is another benefit in joy, as in the case of two men whom Eliyahu said merited the world to come by virtue of their being happy people, who, whenever they saw a sad person, would cheer him up, and who, whenever they saw two people quarreling, would joke with them, and so they made peace between themselves. That means 22a. The same applies here in the area of halacha. Lectures should be prefaced with a pleasantry to open the hearts of the students uh, study, uh, Hashem. Enjoy. enjoy. This is what we're trying to do here all the time. We come here, Jesse's here, we're making fun of Jesse and we continue. No, we're, just, we're making jokes with Jesse all the time. Now, about Jesse. <laughs> yeah. You see, this is the halacha. I have to do it, Jesse. Every time you know, that's the halacha. <laughs> Now, it's amazing, in Masechet Tanit, it talked about, someone was talking uh, with, Rabbi, with, with Eliyahu, Eliyahu the prophet, and they told him, show me here in the, this marketplace, in this flea market, who has a share in the world to come for sure? And he showed them to comedians, to people that do a stand-up comedy, to clowns. And, by the way, I don't know, I heard people afraid of clowns. I, well, my daughter says, I'm scared. From Why on earth? Why people afraid of clowns? You of can't movie. tell their actual like, like facial expression. So if you see clown here, you're you gonna get scared. If absolutely, yes. I thought it's a joke. People saying no, that some some of them paint it scary and like yeah. just even like regular clowns freak me out because you can't tell what their facial expressions are because it's covered in paint. It's also it's just because creepy. of the movie. It's it. creepy. There's a movie called yeah. It. It's a very we learned the new thing about Hannah today. <laughs> Don't ever prank me with clowns. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Next gift going to be <laughs> some type of uh, custom or cake looking clown. Okay. Now, so he showed them. They expected to see to, that he will say, "Eliyahu, a prophet says, maybe this rabbi, this one, two clowns, two comedians. You know what they do?" So he was. Very curious, he told him, he asked them, what are you guys doing? He expected them to say, we doing a lot of chesed, we're doing tzedakah, we're teaching Torah. And says, no, we're making people laugh. Not like the stand-up comedian today, that right. making pe other people laugh on the expense of other people, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, these people, making other people laugh out of their wisdom, the way they behave, they act, or mimics, whatever they do. So, I'm saying it because if they get rewarded in the world to, to be the, uh, they get a share in the world to come, obviously they're doing something that is permitted, right? Mm -hmm. So you see, you can get a share in the world to come with making other people laugh mm -hmm. and happy, the joy. You see, it's easy. Not to say that that's the only thing you will do, right? Not to focus on that only. Torah, you have to study, you have to do uh, tefillah and mitzvot and tefillah, whatever. Don't neglect your obligations. But some do get to share the world to come through Torah learn, learning, teaching, and studying. Some through making other people laugh. Okay? There's, you see from here, there's many roads to heaven. Knock, knock on heaven. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, Guns, Guns and Roses. Roses. Guns and Roses, okay. I saw a t-shirt in Israel that said Guns and Roses. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so go ahead. But, continue. Not with words producing gross or vain joys, but with the joy of a mitzvah which rejoices the heart, as it is written in Tehillim 19.9. <clears throat> the commandments of Hashem are just... They rejoice the heart. Ah, uh, you see? The, the commandments of Hashem are just. They rejoice the heart. This is a very well-known quote in, 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 in Jewish literature. Pikudeh Hashem Yesharim is some chedr. It says, if you are sad, if you are upset with something, open the Bible, open the Tanakh, open Psalms, read it for 10 minutes. You'll see your neshama will rest will come down because you're now making a direct connection to the Shekhinah to God 
And the only way to do it is through Torah, mitzvot, with the joy. So next time someone, God forbid, get upset, you know what to do. Okay? V'chol zeh, he said this in the last one, and all this refers to the joy of a mitzvah. Meaning, and I finish with here with this point. There's two kind of people. One do a mitzvah, right? A perform a mitzvah with a joy and one without it. The one who did with the joy, his reward is beyond our imagination. And the other one, they did the same mitzvah, but he did it just because you have to do it. He put the feeling just because you have to. You have to. You, want to get, you don't want to get punished. You don't want to ruin his day. You want to have a great mazal tov in his... It's okay. But one that do it feeling with mitzvah, with, with, I'm sorry, with the simcha of mitzvah, the joy of the mitzvah, every, every part of the tefillin he put on his hand, and when he placed the crown, it, it, the, the tefillin looked, it treated like a crown over his head. Hashem says, ah, look at this guy. He loves my mitzvot. He loves the, my commandments. He loves the mitzvah of tefillin. He doesn't dig under the mystery of that feeling. Why it's black? Why it's square? Why this side? Why that side? I don't question him now. He asks me something, I'll give it to him. He's not questioning me, I'm not questioning me. You do it with the joy, you get so much from Hashem. Hashem has the ability to give you as much as you want. He's not limited. And things and blessings that comes from the Almighty are also not limited. With that being said, I want to say thank you to everybody, all the participants in this story class. God bless you. So you won't have to go to the doctors in your life. But say amen. amen. You, you, you'll have, you'll have Bezat Hashem, great parnasa all your life. Whoever needs shiduchim, good husband, good wives, good children. And you should hear every day more and more good news to you and your family. Amen. God bless. On behalf of Oh Heavens of Foundation. Oh Heavens of Foundation. You know it by heart already. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I want to thank you. Bye bye.